Hello guys, Code 4 is back with another amazing video. This video is all about the frequently asked questions from Chapter 5 of Computer Science IDCSE. If you are new to this channel, this channel is all about educative stuff, so don't forget to subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. Before moving on to the video, I would like to tell you some things about this video. The questions which are discussed in this video are from past papers. All questions explained may come or may not come in your board exam. The answers discussed here are from marking scheme, so don't worry about that. There will be all frequently asked questions from each chapter and are in order. Questions from 2015 to 2020, it's up to date. Pass paper code for each question given on the left top side of your screen. Marks for each question are given in square brackets. The video also has memory tips which will help you remember answers. Each day there will be a video posted on each chapter FAQ. It's that simple. If you want an A star in your mark sheet, just turn on the notification bell to always and subscribe code 4. The fifth chapter is input and output devices. There are a lot of FAQs for this chapter and they are all interesting and long answer type ones. The first question is the majority of mobile phones uses touch screens. Three common technologies are used by different mobile phone manufacturers. Choose one of the following mobile phone technologies. Resistive, capacitive, infrared. Write down the chosen technology in this space provided. Describe how your chosen technology works to allow a user to make selections by touching the screen. That is, they are asking the process of that technology. Second subdivision. Give one benefit and one drawback of your chosen technology when used on mobile phone touchscreens. So in this question, there are three set of answers you can write. And I will tell you which is best to remember and also explain you the answer so that you learn it better, not longer. And that's what code 4 is meant for. First, let's see capacitive. So in a capacitive touchscreen technology, current flows out from all four corners. And when finger touches the screen, the current changes and the location of touch is calculated. So here, just understand the concept that is current and voltage change. The voltage change determines the touch position and the rest of, of the sentence you can frame it. You get two marks for the description. Now let's move on to the infrared. We all know that IR is a radiation. So this technology uses an invisible grid on the screen and the sensor detects where screen is touched when IR beams break and the position of the screen touch is calculated. Note here that for writing position of touch calculated, they give you one mark. Next up, we have resistive touch screen technology which uses multiple layer of materials and they too rely upon electric current and when the current changes, the touch location is determined and the current change when top layer is pushed into the bottom layer. Now that we have seen description, let's move on to the benefits and drawback of these technologies. Let's go in the same order. Capacitive first. So they are really good when used in sunlight as their visibility is best amongst the three. They also have a very durable surface and allow multi-touch facility. The drawbacks are the screen will break, it's more fragile and you can't use when wearing gloves. G D A S G that is good dad allows son to play games. Remember this line G is for good visibility, D is for durability, A is for allowing multi-touch, S is for screen fragileness, G is for can't use while wearing gloves. Hope this memory trick works for you all. Comment below if you find it useful. I'll try to give more of those. Next, we have infrared technology. Good durability and also allows multi-touch facility and you can use stylus, finger, gloves and still touch gets detected. 
The drawbacks are it is expensive, the screen is fragile, it's sensitive to dust. A good memory trick for this is great tactor cancels expensive surgery. Starting letter stands for the benefits and drawbacks in order. Last but not least, we have resistive. It is inexpensive and allows various touches, but it has more drawbacks that is poor visibility in sunlight and it doesn't allow multi-touch and it is also vulnerable to scratching. So I greatly prefer you to remember capacitive first, infrared second and resistive last. This way you can learn better. Let's move on to the next question. If you haven't watched the chapter explanation video for chapter 5, make sure you see the description to watch the video. There are two parts, so don't forget to watch the second part. The next question is, street lighting is controlled automatically. A light sensor and a microprocessor are used to decide when to switch each street light on or off. Describe how the sensor microprocessor and light interact to switch the street light on or off. Include in your answer how the microprocessor stops the street light being frequently switched on and off due to brief changes in the light intensity. 5 mark question. The most repeated one in this chapter and I could nearly tell you that it comes in every paper and I have a tiny little proof which you are going to see soon. The answer for this is so simple. Just vary the answer according to the question asked and that will fetch you 5 marks but sometimes 6 marks too. Now let's take a look at the answers now. In the marking scheme there is a concept which is mentioned and I would like you all to remember this concept. Write down in a piece of paper and stick it where you always be so you can remember the answer well. As I already said this question comes in each paper and can be on your paper too. And I will tell you how to modify the answer to the question type. So for this question, the answer is the sensor sends signal to the microprocessor and that should happen or the whole mechanism won't work. So the first line is easily understandable. Then we have the signal getting converted to digital using ADC, analog digital converter, since it is an analog. Now the microprocessor compares stored values. If the data which is right now is less than the value signal is sent from microprocessor to actuator and light is switched on or off. This three lines should be varied according to the question type. The next line is a standard answer and that is the whole process is in an infinite loop. The next two marks of this question is writing microprocessor keeps light on or off for some period of time. After that, sensor outputs again are sampled and this is written because it is asked in the question. Hope you understand the concept. Now time for you to see the proof. So here comes the proof. The question is, a cold store is kept at a constant low temperature using a sensor, a microprocessor and a cooling unit. Explain how the sensor and microprocessor will maintain a constant low temperature. You can see the past paper code right up on the screen and you can go check if it is really there or not. So you see it is already repeated twice and the answers will also be shocking as it is nearly 75% same. Let's see that too. So let me quickly read the answer and tell the points repeated. Temperature sensor. So here the rate the sensor used in this concept. The next point is Analog data or temperature is converted to digital data with an ADC. This point is repeated. Sensor sends signal to the microprocessor. This point is repeated as well. Microprocessor compares input values with stored values or preset values. This is repeated too. And then the line continues. If the temperature value input is low, high or too low, that is this line is varied according to the question as I said you earlier. A signal is sent from the microprocessor to turn on or off or up or down the cooling unit. If the temperature matches the stored values, no action is taken. An actuator is used to turn the cooling unit on or off or up or down. And the process is a continuous loop. This line is repeated too. 
So you see, six mark is confirmed. So the next question is, four hardware items are shown in the table below. For each hardware item, name a suitable application, state how it is used in the application, give a different application in each case. The four hardware items are barcode reader, microphone, touchscreen, infrared. Wow, an eight mark question. This question is also repeated multiple times and it's really confusing at first. People who come across this question usually say that they don't know exactly what to write. But don't think too hard. The answers are so easy. Barcode reader is used everywhere, all around the globe, isn't it? Can't you just name few areas where it is used? There would be supermarkets, airports, etc. etc. So the application is just writing where it is used. Now the use is in supermarket it is used to find price and it is well known and in library it is used to track books on loan and in airport it is used on luggages. The next hardware is microphone. We use that everywhere too. You hear me saying because I used a microphone to record my voice and your speakers are letting them out. So it is used in voice recognition system. So it allows computer to recognize spoken words and use them as input. And it is used in video conferencing too, to allow users to speak to each other. Touchscreen is used in mobile phone. The whole world knows that. It is used to allow user to select apps and input data. IR sensor, that is infrared sensor, is used in burglar alarms and it detects the presence of a person by change of temperature. It is also used for counting, which I don't think many will know, but make sure you know at least now if you haven't yet. The next question is, the steps to print a document using a laser printer are shown in the table below. Put each step in the correct order. The first step has been done for you. This is a bonus question in this video. Although I know this question has, hasn't been repeated many times, this question can help you learn about laser printer in a different way. Let's read the steps first. As the printing drum rotates, a laser scans across it. This removes the positive charge in certain areas. The printing drum is co coated in positively charged toner. This then sticks to the negatively charged parts of the printing drum. The paper goes through a fuser which melts the toner so it fixes permanently to the paper. The printer driver ensures that the data is in a format that the laser printer can understand and is marked as 1. A negatively charged sheet of paper is then rolled around the printing drum. Data is then sent to the laser printer and stored temporarily in the printing buffer. The toner on the printer drum is now transferred to the paper to reproduce the required text and images. The printing drum is given a positive charge. Negatively charged areas are then produced on the printing drum. These match exactly with the text and image to be printed. So after the first step, the second step would be that data should be sent. So this is the second step. Data is then sent to the laser printer and stored temporarily in the printer buffer. So after data is sent, what next? The printing drum is given a positive charge. That is the third step. Then, as the printing drum rotates, a laser scans across it, which removes the positive charge in certain areas. This is the fourth step. And negatively charged areas are then produced on the printing drum. These match exactly with the text and image to be printed. This is the fifth step. And the next one would be, the printing drum is coated in positively charged toner, which then sticks to the negatively charged parts of the printing drum. Now, the seventh step would be a negatively charged sheet of paper rolled over the printing drum. Then, a toner on the printing drum is now transferred to the paper to reproduce the required text and image. This is the eighth step. And the last step would be the paper goes through a fuser which melts the toner so it fixes permanently to the paper. That's the end of this question. The next frequently asked question in chapter 5 is Modern liquid crystal display LCD monitors use light emitting diode LED 
backlit technology give four benefits of using led technology wow that's a great question and you get four marks the answers are so easy to remember and i'll tell you how as you see there are six benefits of led technology mentioned in our book and the marking scheme it reaches maximum brightness quickly and its colors are so vivid they have good color definition or contrast can be achieved screens can be thinner or thin and more reliable as leds are long lasting it consumes very little or less energy a memory tip for this points are ron can go skating in the modern city remember this sentence you can remember the points well i hope you remember that now we have come to the last faq of this chapter nancy has captured images of her holiday with a camera the captured images are stored as digital photo files on her camera explain how the captured images are converted to digital photo files four marks this question has a lot of answers but you require only four let's see what the answer so here there is a concept to remember first the image is converted from analog to digital using analog digital converter that is adc now the image is turned into pixels the small small things which you can see when you zoom in right now each pixel is given a binary value so that the mechanism or the computer understands the pixel forms a grid this grid creates the image each each pixel has a color so that you see the image pixels are stored in a sequence in a file metadata is stored to describe the dimensions of the image it stores the dimension or color color depth an example of a suitable photo file format that is jpeg or jpg etc you can give any of the following that's the end of the faqs in chapter 5 thanks for watching make sure you click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you get instant updates when we post a video all faqs for all eight chapters coming soon please stay tuned